It's a real pleasure for us to be joined today by Dr. Runga Metzger. He is Director in DG Klima in the European Commission, where he's responsible for the European Commission's efforts to tackle climate change domestically at EU level and at the international level. We're very glad you're able to join us today. Thank you very much. So in December last year, the Commission presented its plan for the European Green Deal, and the Commission hopes that this very tra transformative document will form the basis of EU climate action policy over the coming years. What are some of the headline ambitions of the European Green Deal? Mm -hmm. I think when you look at climate change, the headline ambition is really to start making Europe the first climate neutral continent by the year 2050. So the Green Deal in Europe is the first chapter uh, towards implementation. Uh, and what it means is that you will have to act on all major sectors of the economy, whether it is the energy sector, it's, whether it's the industrial sector, whether it's mobility. Uh, you will have to move um, the industry towards circular economy. Uh, we will have to up our targets on climate change. Uh, up to now it's minus 40% by 2030. So we will look at 50 or perhaps 55% emission reductions. Uh, we will look at the overhaul of the emissions trading system uh, of all the regulations that cover and touch on greenhouse gas emissions, so whether it's the standards for cars in the future. But apart from that, um, it's also biodiversity that we want to tackle uh, and other pollution forms of pollution in Europe. Uh, so there will also be a biodiversity strategy um, and there will be a strategy to reduce pollution from chemicals or from pesticides uh, in Europe in the coming uh, decade. It's a hugely wide-ranging plan. Yes. And there's a significant economic component to the Green Deal. President von der Leyen has described it as a new growth strategy for the EU. What kind of opportunities will it present for European citizens and businesses? I think it will present huge opportunities because in order to get to a climate-neutral economy, in Europe by 2050, you need to have massive investments into the economy. Uh, and let's start with the citizens. So if you look at housing, for instance, it means deep renovation of houses. So houses will become much more comfortable in future. The energy bill of the houses will go down drastically and dramatically uh, if you renovate those houses. Um, you look at um, mobility, um, the car of the future is a car that doesn't pollute, is a car that is not noisy um, and is a car that might take you on your own. So it gives you more time, a connected car. So it's smart mobility uh, what citizens are going to have. And in order to get there, uh, you need to have an industry that is producing all these new wonderful things and gadgets. Um, and that presents a huge opportunity for industry. Um, if we in Europe lead, then we create lead markets for those new products. Uh, and that's not only cars, it goes right across um, all the industry, whether it is chemicals that we at the moment produce from oil, we will produce them from biomass, for instance. So the farmers will also benefit um, through increased use of biomass in industrial sectors. So there's plenty of opportunities there. And if Europe is to become a leader, as you said, in some of these new and emerging sectors, significant levels of investment will be required. The EIB has obviously already spoken about its ambition to become Europe's mm -hmm. climate bank, but how is the Commission trying to encourage the private sector to contribute to the European Green Deal? I think there's two ways of doing this. One is definitely by regulatory action, so we have a carbon price in Europe, uh, and a carbon price that is going to increase in the coming years, and that is going to make certain products competitive in the market. So that will help industry to bring the clean products to the market. Uh, but then we will also try to help on the side of investments. So when we invest into new industries uh, to help via the European Investment Bank uh, with using as little public money as possible and trying to leverage as much as possible private finance uh, to generate these investments. A third angle is, of course, there's the private investor who, at present point in time, is not quite sure what his money is going to be used for. So to also have a good taxonomy on what is a green investment, what is a sustainable investment in the future, will help for the ones who own the capital to make the right decisions to invest in the right type of funds. Um, and hopefully these are going to be more and more green funds. 
And just we've talked about the opportunities for citizens, for investors. Implementing the Green Deal will inevitably also entail significant challenges for certain regions, sectors. In Ireland, the, the agricultural sector is traditionally a high contributor to our net emissions. How does the Commission propose supporting farmers and others in transitioning to greener, greener forms of production? Yeah. I think in Europe we have uh, what's called the Common Agriculture Policy and what is foreseen um, for the next seven years is to spend about 40% on climate relevant expenditure uh, when it comes to the Common Agriculture Policy and with that we want to support uh, the right farming methods like precision farming that will help to reduce the amount of inputs, um, some of which goes into the atmosphere as emissions. Uh, we want to help farmers to also create new markets for replacing um, materials that come from fossil fuels at the moment, whether it is biofuels, whether it's the energy we use to produce electricity, or whether it's the feedstock in the chemical industry, or even if you look at the fabric, uh, instead of using uh, synthetic um, fibers, we can use natural fibers, and they can come from also European agriculture or European forestry. So there's ample opportunities that we can grasp. Um, but we also know that there is particular challenges because some people might lose their jobs and entire industries might go. Just think of coal. Uh, and I think here Europe is ready to support regional development to find new businesses, uh, to find new jobs for these regions uh, to make the transition into a clean future and not to leave those people behind. Well, thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure and we look forward to uh, welcoming you again one time to the Institute. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.